The Dead Sea, despite its misleading name, is not an ordinary body of water. Contrary to expectations, it is not as lifeless as one might think. However, a series of tragic events in recent times have led to the gradual demise of the Dead Sea. The world is now actively investigating the underlying factors that have contributed to this distressing situation. Discussions are underway regarding the causes behind the slow depletion of this once thriving water source. Is there still time to reverse the fate of the Dead Sea and restore it to its former glory? That is the topic of our conversation today, and we invite you to stay with us until the very end, brought to you by Eduvox. Imagine a sea that defies conventional norms. Nestled within a valley in Jordan, the Dead Sea is not your typical body of water. Spanning over 800 square kilometers, it is more accurately described as a salt lake. What truly sets it apart is its remarkable salinity. With levels reaching up to an astonishing 33%, it surpasses even the vast Mediterranean Sea by tenfold. Yet, the Dead Sea is not the saltiest water source on the planet. Other bodies of water like Lake Retba in Senegal boast even higher salinity. However, the Dead Sea reigns supreme due to another remarkable feature. It is the lowest inland water source globally, situated approximately 400 meters below sea level. But how did it acquire such a grim name? We'll explore that in a moment. Throughout history, the name Dead Sea has persisted, with many believing that its extraordinarily high salinity makes it incapable of supporting any form of life. At first glance, this explanation seems plausible. However, appearances can be deceiving. While fish cannot survive in this unique water source, various organisms have remarkably adapted to its harsh conditions. Some of these creatures are exclusive to the Dead Sea, found nowhere else in the world. The high salinity and density of the water make floating an effortless experience, leading many to believe that drowning is impossible in the Dead Sea. Alas, this notion is far from accurate. Although floating comes naturally in the sea, its extreme salinity causes eye inflammation and, tragically, cases of drowning have been reported. If someone loses their balance while floating, they may unintentionally swallow large amounts of salt water, leading to fatal consequences. On the flip side, the sea's salt has been hailed for its therapeutic benefits, attracting tourists seeking relief from various skin ailments. Consequently, around 3 million visitors flock to the Dead Sea each year, drawn by its healing powers. However, these cherished experiences may soon become relics of the past. According to experts, within three decades from now, the Dead Sea may vanish completely, leaving behind a desolate desert. This catastrophe would have dire social, economic, and environmental consequences. But why is this calamity unfolding? Who predicts such a fate for this natural wonder? And most importantly, can it be saved? Let's uncover the answers. So, what has led to the demise of this once vibrant body of water? The primary water source for the Dead Sea is the Jordan River. However, the river's water supply to the Dead Sea has been dwindling over the years. Jordan, Israel, and Syria consume 95% of the Jordan River's water to fulfill the drinking water needs of their populations and sustain agricultural activities through canal systems. Consequently, the Dead Sea receives only a fraction of its former water flow. Back in the 1930s, the sea would receive 1300 million cubic meters of water annually, but that figure has now plummeted to a mere 310 cubic meters. Every year since the 1990s, the water level of the Dead Sea has been receding by several meters, and this rate continues to accelerate. Within three decades, one-third of the sea has vanished due to evaporation surpassing incoming water. The resulting environmental consequences are severe. As water evaporates, concentrated salts accumulate on the ground, further elevating the sea's salinity. That's not all. The high salt content in the soil has weakened its structure, leading to frequent landslides and sinkholes. These sinkholes, with diameters of around 30 meters, have rendered the surrounding areas barren and caused significant damage to campsites, roads, and schools. 
The industries that excessively exploit the sea's resources also share responsibility for its destruction. For example, numerous factories extract salts from the Dead Sea to produce fertilizers through constant evaporation of seawater. To promote sustainable usage, Jordan and Israel have established a series of man-made evaporation ponds in the southern part of the Dead Sea. However, these efforts alone may not suffice to reverse the sea's fate. So, what are the ultimate solutions and potential risks? Can we save the Dead Sea from complete desiccation? Essentially, two solutions are being considered. One is to increase the water flow from the Jordan River into the Dead Sea, effectively replenishing it with fresh water. Another concept gaining traction is the construction of a pipeline to transfer water from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea. This ambitious endeavor would coincide with the operation of a seawater desalination plant located in the Jordanian city of Agba. The plan involves extracting highly concentrated salt water from the Red Sea, removing salts to obtain drinkable water, and pumping the remaining salt water into the Dead Sea. While this may sound feasible at first, environmental scientists caution against its potential consequences. They highlight the risk of damaging the ecosystem while attempting to revive the Dead Sea. Another proposal that has been discussed is the idea of constructing a canal connecting the Red Sea and the Dead Sea, a concept first introduced in the late 19th century. Recent studies supported by the World Bank have shown promising results, suggesting that this project could be socially, environmentally, and economically beneficial. The initial step would involve diverting 235 million cubic meters of concentrated salt water from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea, followed by a transfer of 700 million cubic meters of water. However, the success of these plans remains uncertain until they are actively implemented. The combination of sulfate salts from the Red Sea and calcium salts from the Dead Sea may result in turbid and raw water. Furthermore, the proposed pipeline connecting Ratu Muhudu and Malamuhudu could be vulnerable to damage in the event of natural disasters, such as earthquakes. Such an incident could jeopardize the freshwater springs if the highly saline water infiltrates them. Considering these factors, increasing the water flow from the Jordan River seems to be the most practical and secure approach. While the idea of transferring water from the Mediterranean Sea or the Red Sea is not entirely abandoned, the focus has shifted towards prioritizing the desalination of seawater to meet Jordan's pressing freshwater needs. Israel, with its relatively ample freshwater sources, has not engaged in the efforts due to political tensions with Jordan. However, Jordan is in the final stages of establishing a desalination plant, which could potentially channel highly concentrated salt water into the Dead Sea. Nevertheless, the current outlook for the Dead Sea remains grim, with the Minister of Water Supply and Irrigation of Jordan admitting that hope for its salvation is fading with each passing day.